Hello. Because of unfortunate situations, I had a day off of work today. And I have a day off Monday and Tuesday as well. Guess what I have to do again? I have to get tested again. So, 2022 is off to a fantastic start, but like I said earlier, I have no hope for this year. Anyway, so, um, we are going to do the Degrassi video today. I have a handy dandy notebook that says English 12 on it. Ignore that. I used it for one of my classes. So. We are going to, first, how we're going to do this is we're going to talk about the plot of the episode. And I have it up here so I can just read the um, plot. And then I'm going to show you how, like, they solve it, like a clip of how they solved it. And I'll say whether I agree with how they solved it or if I think there's a better way they could have done it. Then in the second half of this video, we're going to talk about the relationships and if I think they were good or not. So, you know. So, let's start with season one, obviously. Let's start with episode one. So it's called Mother and Child Reunion and there were two parts to this episode. Um, I'm just gonna say that we did not talk about Degrassi Junior High or Degrassi High yet. I'm starting with The Next Generation just to kind of like test the waters of how this series is going to go. And then I'll go into them. But anyway, so basically, Spike Nelson's 12-year-old daughter, Emma, has spent the year communicating with her boyfriend, Jordan, over the internet and finally makes plans to meet him in person, even though her friends warn her about the potential dangers in doing so. Degrassi High's classes of 1992 and 1993 return for their high school reunion. Recently widowed, Joey is unsure if he even wants to go, especially after finding out that his ex-girlfriend Caitlin is bringing her fiancé Keith to the event. So the biggest story out of that was Internet Predators, and you know when a show starts with something like that, like shit hit the fan real quick. It started with an internet predator talking to Emma pretending to be Jordan. So the second episode is when we get how they fixed it. But they basically went into her email and told parents to get some help. What's your mom's maiden name? Uh Nelson, same as Emma. Okay, that's not it. Does she have a dog? A fish? Anything? Ah, here we go. Secret question. What's mom's favorite rock band? Huh. I don't get it. See, look here. You and Emma rent Chicken Run. The next day she mentions it in an email to you. So? Jordan's next email? He likes Chicken Run, too. Big deal. Coincidence, right? But the next day, Emma emails you some garbage about how great fresh air is. Jordo's next email? I love hiking. Being out in the fresh air makes me feel so free. Emma writes to you or to anyone? He echoes it back to her. The guy's not looking into her soul. He's reading her email. There. His last message. He's at the Bartley Valley, room 1409. Guys! What's up? It's Emma. It's Emma. We, we hacked her email to find out where she went. Wait a minute. She's in the snowdown. Stop. 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 Hello, police? My daughter's in danger. I don't know who 
she's with. All I know is that it's someone she met on the internet. Please hurry. You guys go home. I'll call your parents. Understanding. You make a move, I'm going to break your neck. Clear? In a situation with internet predators, um, I'll show you them fixing it, uh, which you, you saw the clip. Um, I definitely think that telling parents is the way to go or telling trusted adults because when you're dealing with internet predators, you don't want to deal with it alone. That's dangerous. You don't know if they have like weapons or anything. Like you don't know these people. They're obviously creepy and you don't know what they have planned or what they would want to do. So basically, um, I think telling adults or even telling the police yourself is the way to go about it because that'll help you fix the problem. So. That was episode one and two. Now we're gonna jump into episode three. I'm gonna read you the plot first. It's the first day of school at Degrassi Community School. An eighth grader, Ashley, already has her sights set on becoming the school's newest student council president. Her seemingly sure win is soon threatened with her stepbrother, Toby, when her stepbrother, Toby, becomes frustrated by her unchallenged status and convinces his friend, JT, to run against her. Meanwhile, Emma and Manny deal with eighth grade spinners bullying. So, what I said the most important thing was election and family disagreements. So I'll show you the clip here of how they solve it. So, is this what defeat looks like or just guilt? Congratulations, Ashley. Yeah, whatever. I mean it. Congratulations, you, you deserve to win. Okay, what have you done with the real Toby Isaacs? It's my fault JT's in trouble for running the joke campaign. I shouldn't have put him up to it. You're right, you shouldn't have. Ash, I'm trying to apologize here. I knew it would drive you crazy. I just couldn't stop myself. You hate me that much? Sometimes. I gotta admit, sometimes I feel the same way about you. The fact is, Toby, we have to live with each other. In the same house, and that sucks, right? Didn't say that again. But... Does it have to suck this much? Maybe not. Maybe not. Are we bonding here? Bonding? Us? Well, for the first time in a month, I don't want to rip your eyes out. Wow. Dr. Freed would be so proud. I think talking it out is the best way to solve it. I think Degrassi did show that. Like, that was the best way to solve the problem, was talking it out. Because when you have a disagreement with anybody, you know me on this channel, I say you talk things out. You don't use violence, you talk things out. So I think that was the best way to deal with it, and Degrassi handled that really well. Episode four, Eye of the Beholder. Terry doesn't want to attend Degrassi's first nighttime dance because she thinks she's too fat for any guy to like her. Spinner likes her, but Paige wants him for herself and by playing on her insecurities, gets Terry drunk before her date with Spinner. Meanwhile, Emma is puzzled by the new kid's behavior, and JT and Toby skip the dance to look at internet pornography. I do want to say that the parents making the kids watch porn with them was one of the funniest things. But anyway, so I said underage drinking was the biggest, and I'll show you um, where it got resolved. <laughs> Hey, so how come you didn't call me all weekend? Because I wanted to fall off the face of the earth and die. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Mr. Radich says we can have another night dance next semester. Oh, well, at least I didn't wreck everything. Of course you didn't. 
Things are gonna work out. Just trust me. Hey, Terry. Hey, are you feeling better? Look, here are those notes back. Thanks again. Yeah, Terry, thanks, but Spinner's gonna use my notes from now on. She, as you saw, she embarrassed herself so bad that she would never do it again. And I think it's just, I think Degrassi showed that in a good way because it was showing the consequences of drinking. When you drink, you're not yourself or like drunk actions or sober thoughts type of thing. So you do what you would never do if you were sober. And I think that's a good thing to show teens is it's like, don't drink because you're going to do something you regret or you're going to say something that you regret and it's just not going to go well. So I think that was a good way to show it. Um, so Degrassi usually just really good. I don't think I'll disagree with much, but I might have some. So episode five, Parents Day. With Parents Day fast approaching, Toby tries to convince his divorced parents that the event is canceled in order to avoid an ug ugly public spat between them. Meanwhile, Ashley and Paige vie for the attention of Toby's mom, who happens to be a casting agent. Emma is annoyed by the NAK, News About Kids, Morning Announcements Program, believing it to be biased. She then writes an opinionated paper about NAK and gets into an argument with Sean and his brother about it. Um, so episode five, I said, divorced parents argue. So I'll show you where they say it's resolved. Mom, Dad, yeah, my assignment was late. Who's to blame? Video games. I'm telling you, they're destroying my generation. Toby, this isn't a joke. I'm not joking, okay? I don't have an excuse, but Dad can't do my homework for me or make sure I go to class. It's my life, right? So it's my problem. Stop blaming each other and then using me as another excuse to argue. Because it's not fair. I'll try harder. I promise. I do think talking to your parents is, I don't know what that was. I do think talking to the parents is a good way to go about it and a good way to get things done. But I don't think that's the only solution. I think there are many other solutions. Also the way Degrassi portrayed it, I think you would want to talk to your parents in a more calm manner than they had Toby do. But I think talking about it definitely at least opens up the conversation and lets your parents know how you're feeling. Because no matter, like, divorced or whatever, your parents still love you and still care about you and want to make sure you're okay. So, yep. Episode 6, The Mating Game. Jimmy and Ashley's eight-month anniversary comes up, but with Paige playing Juliet to Jimmy's Romeo for their English class assignment, Ashley contemplates having sex with them to keep him interested. Meanwhile, Toby attempts to get closer to Emma when the seventh graders are given an assignment on endangered animals. So, anniversary slash sex. So, I'll put the time code right here where it was solved, but... Sorry about that. I... Oh. Ash, what's wrong? I can't. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but I just can't. Maybe somebody like Paige can, but... What did you say? About Paige? Just... Maybe she's the girl for you. You think because of this Shakespeare stuff, I want to be with Paige? She's ready to do this. She's done this. But I'm not. Good. Because to be honest, neither am I. You gotta talk to your partner about sex. You're not gonna know if you're ready unless you can have this mature discussion about it. A lot of people are too scared to talk about sex or they feel too uncomfortable or they don't wanna talk to their partner about that. It's an uncomfortable conversation, but you have to have it. Because if you can't have a conversation about sex, you shouldn't be having sex, frankly. So it's just, that's why it was the biggest thing because it was like, yeah, they ended up talking it out and they both didn't feel ready for it, but a lot of people can't have that conversation. And I do agree with Degrassi. That is the best way to solve the conversation is talk to your partner about it. You guys need to talk about how you feel because if you can't talk about it, you shouldn't be doing it. Sorry guys, I move my hands when I talk because I have a lot of nervous, anxious energy. 
The next one, number seven, basketball diaries. Jimmy wants to make the basketball team, but due to practice, his schoolwork suffers. To get an energy boost, he convinces Spinner to skip a Ritalin pill and give it to him instead, resulting in Spinner off his medication, mooning the audience during halftime. Jimmy, under the influence of the Ritalin, of the Ritalin gets himself into trouble when he hurts Sean in an attempt to take the winning shot. Meanwhile, Liberty is tired of Ashley's video announcement speeches and not getting any credit for it. Ashley then gives her a chance of doing the announcement with disastrous results. So, taking drugs, I'll show you how they resolve the problem. Can I talk to you for a second? It's about this afternoon out on the court. I know. 12 points plus the game point. It's the best I've ever played. In terms of scoring, yes. But you showboated. You ball hogged. You blew plays. You weren't a team player. I know. But you know what worries me? It's what you did to Sean. You know, you almost broke his ankle out there. That was an accident. Accident? Come on, Jimmy. You fouled your own player deliberately. Now, you know we have a zero tolerance policy for violence. It was stupid. It'll never happen again. I promise. I can't take that chance. Sorry, Jimmy. You're cut. So they cut him from the team, which I think is actually good because not only did he injure one of his teammates, but he was on drugs and you could tell something was off. And it shows people that if you do drugs or like anything like that to try to solve a problem, it's not going to work in your favor. So it's not worth it. I agree with showing people that doing drugs is not the answer and it's not going to get you what you want. It's just going to hurt you in the end. I definitely agree with that. Number eight, secrets and lies. Ashley's dad is coming home from Europe and she's happy until she finds out he's gay and cuts him out of her life. Meanwhile, Liberty has the biggest crush on JT, but he's not interested. When he hears about Ashley's father, he tells Liberty he too is a homosexual. So that was the parent coming out as gay. Obviously, I'll show you how they went to solve it. Were you ever planning on telling me? Ash, you were too young to understand. Too young? When you left us, okay, but you guys had five years. Well, we didn't handle it correctly, I admit, but we thought it would be best if we waited till you were older. Guess what? I'm older. And still pretty hard to hear, right? This is gonna sound so selfish and um, incredibly lame, but I had to find myself, Ash even if it meant hurting you and your mother. It's nobody's fault. And it's not wrong. It's just the way I am. So why did you even get married? You didn't love Mom. Ash, of course I did. I still do. But I'm not in love with her. I tried to make it work. But I just couldn't. And I hate myself for hurting you. But it was the only thing I could do. Honest. I think they did a really good job with this too. Talking with the parent to try to understand more instead of just judge or get mad is definitely what they should have done. Um, talking with the parent is definitely the way that's going to solve it. Like That's definitely the best thing that they could have had her do. Number nine, coming of age. With his parents working constantly, Jimmy starts to spend all his time at Ashley's, which leaves her feeling smothered. Meanwhile, Emma learns her mood swings are not just because of stress when she gets her first period. So this is about the first period and I'll show you how they chose to solve it. And let me just tell you. Do you have a problem? Um, it's okay. We can just get... Aww. Did Emmy pee her pants? Aww. No, I just got my period for the first time. Menstruation, you may have heard of it. Happens to owe 50% of the population. Perfectly natural. Nothing to be ashamed of, right, Miss Kwan? Absolutely right, Emma. Now, may we continue? Our book was, I Heard the Owl Call My Name. I love how they chose to solve this. It was such a woman moment. Like, it was such a 
strong woman moment, standing up for herself, a normal thing that happens to all women. Like it was amazing. I loved it so much. And the fact that like guys make jokes about periods all the time and then for a girl to finally shut them down, that was amazing. I love how Degrassi did that. And obviously don't be ashamed of your period, girls. It is a natural thing that happens. I'm actually on my period right now. So it's a normal thing that happens. Okay. Rumors and Reputations, episode 10. Emma accidentally starts a hurtful rumor about Liberty dating Mr. Armstrong, when in fact she's getting extra tutoring with him for a dyscalculia. Meanwhile, Spinner finds a bug in his school lunch, but no one will believe his story. Determined to prove himself right, he puts bugs in Ashley's food and is forced to take a job in the school's cafeteria as punishment. So, rumor about an affair with a teacher was the big thing, and here I'll put, you know, the time codes. Leave me alone, Emma. Liberty, what you need right now is a friend. Someone to talk to. But there's nothing to talk about. It's okay, you can tell me. I am telling you. Are you sure you're not lying? Because we really have to report it. Emma! I swear on my life that nothing's going on. The whole school is talking. I know, and it's just a vicious rumor. Honest. What if it gets to Radich? To my parents? What will Mr. Armstrong say when he hears this? And there's only one way to handle this. Stop the rumor and track down its source. Then give whoever started it a... Good swift kick? I was going to say a good talking to, but that'll do. I was responsible for the rumor starting, but I didn't spread it. And there's a difference? You're lucky Mr. Armstrong didn't lose his job. And you know what makes me really mad? That you thought I could do that. Do what? Be violated? And what were you doing with Mr. Armstrong anyway? He had his arm around you? Passed you a note? You want to see my note? Dyscalculia? It's a learning disorder, like dyslexia, but with numbers. I've been really upset about it. Mr. Armstrong's been helping me. So that's the explanation? Why didn't you say something? Because it means you're not perfect? Because it means I'm stupid. Stupid? You're one of the smartest kids in the school. Not in math, I'm not. Who cares? I do. It's important to me to be the best. You don't understand. Liberty, I feel really bad. Is there something I can do to help? No, Emma. Go back to saving rainforests and whales. Because when it comes to helping people, you suck. So it's always good to talk with the person to find out what was going on. Because maybe you saw something and took something out of context. So I think Degrassi did it right. Again, you got to talk with the person. Because if you just start a rumor on what you saw, it can run wild like in this episode. So just make sure you talk to the person to find out what was actually going on. They might not tell you the truth, but if they do, you'll at least understand what's going on and not start a rumor that could ruin someone's reputation. Episode 11, Friday night. Sean asks Emma out on a date, but the night turns into one disaster after another. Meanwhile, when Jimmy and Spinner are given detention by a stressed Miss Kwan, they vow revenge by pulling pranks on her. The pranks are fun at first, but quickly turn cruel when Spinner decides to egg Miss Kwan's car. So, the first date is the one I chose to focus on. The night team. And then we'll put the code here. So how's your wallet? Sean, I am so, so, so sorry about Friday night. Can I have this? It's all yours. Thanks. So, the way that this is solved is Sean comes up to Emma and asks if he can have one of the pictures. Honestly, if you had a really cringy date, not just ask you for a picture, I think, but also, like, 
just keeping that communication open and talking to them. I think that would have been a better way to show it is if he had a conversation with her like, I know the date was really, really cringy or like whatever, but I still had a good time. Like, that would have been a thing where it was like, I still like to hang out with you. So I feel like that would have been a better way. They showed it in a very subtle way because Sean's a very subtle person, but I feel like maybe having that conversation would have been good too. Episode 12, Wannabe. Paige starts a spirit squad at school. Manny, who desperately wants to join, starts to hang out with the it crowd and begins to question her friendship with an unsupportive Emma. Meanwhile, Spinner, Liberty, JT, and Toby team, team up to win a contest. So, cheerleading is what I did, you know, fitting in. So, I'll put the time code here. So, two more people signed up. We're really on our way. Why did you do that? Why did you backstab Hazel? Hello? I had to give up somebody, and you were about to spill your guts. I was simply looking out for you. Well, don't, okay? Not if it means dragging me into your dirty work. My dirty work? You were there, too. Yeah, I ripped one newspaper. One? More like all. Or at least that's what I'll tell Mr. Simpson if you don't shut up. Paige, you were the one who's like, who's he gonna believe? You or me? Let's go find out. Manny, what is your damage? You, Paige! You better watch your mouth. Or what? You'll spread lies about me? Deface my locker? Just try it. <laughs> FYI, your attitude sucks. Good luck taking the squad. I do agree with Manny standing up to Paige. I definitely think that's the way to go. You gotta stand up for yourself. I think Degrassi did amazing with that. You gotta stand up for yourself. You can't let people walk all over you all the time. And I think that was excellent for them to do. Episode 13, Cabaret. Ashley writes a song she plans to perform with Terry at the Degrassi Lunchtime Cabaret. But when Terry adds Paige, she grows annoyed when Paige takes control. Terry attempts to use a recent project on tarot card readings to convince Ashley to go with Paige's ideas, but Ashley refuses, upsetting Terry and Paige. Meanwhile, Emma performs an interpretive dance to advocate anti-poaching, and when Sean refuses to join, Toby steps up. So the big thing about that is the cabaret. And I'll put, you know, two clips. Did someone miss the announcement? We're going on in like five minutes, Ash. I did some internet research on your last reading. The high priestess means stay with the old. You said go with the new. You lied, Ter. Why? Because you hate all of my suggestions. That is so not true. It is. I don't get a say in anything. It's not fair. So? You guys were great. <laughs> really? I admit it, your version totally rocked, and the audience loved it. So, the moment of Terry standing up for herself is a good way to deal with something. If you're thinking about something, you gotta talk to your friends about it, you gotta stand up for yourself, you gotta speak, or they're never gonna know what you're thinking. So I think that was a good thing that they had Terry do. And Ashley accepting it, like showing her grow more used to the idea, was also another good thing Degrassi did, where it's like, you gotta kinda compromise and find something in the middle, which they made Ashley do, which was good. 14, under pressure. With exams approaching at Degrassi, the last thing Sean wants is to repeat grade seven for a second time. When he doesn't finish his media immersions exam on time, he's convinced he has failed again. Stressed to a boiling point, Sean releases his frustrations in a violent way. Meanwhile, Spinner attempts to get sick to avoid taking his English exam, but unlikely, but ultimately gets help from an unlikely source. So, fight and anger management are kind of put together. I'll show you the time. Sean. Some good news. I finished marking, and you did well. What? It's your best mark yet. Pulled your grade up to a B minus. But I didn't finish. So? You aced the rest. It's a good job. You should be proud of yourself. You learn from this, okay? The clip. So, when he learned he did well on the exam, that kind of helped his anger management. And 
I know that they made that the kind of thing, but I feel like they should have done more with Sean maybe talking to a guidance counselor about his misplaced anger or something that could have actually helped him in the long run. I feel like that would have been a little better or talking to Simpson about it or something. I feel like that would have been a little better than just, oh, I did well, I'm not angry anymore because that's not realistic. 15. Jagged Little Pill Ashley is tired of being a perfectionist and turns her end-of-the-year slumber party into an out-of-control rager. Meanwhile, JT brings an ecstasy pill for Toby, Sean, and himself. But when Ashley consumes it, things go from bad to worse. Also, Sean wants to make up with Emma, but Emma's still angry at Sean for his actions in the previous episode. So, it's about taking ecstasy. And I'll show... Uh, I'll show clips as to why you should not do drugs. <laughs> Ash wanted to have fun tonight. I guess she's having fun. <laughs> when did that break? Well, you were dancing with Liberty. When you were straight on E. What were you thinking, Ash? What was I thinking? What were you and JT doing with E in the first place? Guys, doesn't matter. Was it really that bad? <sighs> what if I just called Jimmy? Ash, Paige won't talk to you. Do you really think Jimmy will? I'm such an idiot. How am I ever going to face everyone again? Jimmy? Here, Jimmy doesn't want this stuff anymore. Spinner, how is he? Just take it and don't call him. Ash. Oh, okay. So they end with a breakup, which is something that can happen when you do drugs or do anything that's kind of not you for that matter. It can lead to a breakup. And so it's kind of like, you know, I'm, it's just kind of showing what can happen. And I agree, Degrassi should be showing you what can happen because you, you never know. Like, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, so that's the first episode of this series. Oh, wait, we didn't finish. I'm sorry, we're not finished. The relationships. So we had Ashley and Jimmy. I feel like Ashley and Jimmy dating now was okay when it first started, but then I feel like towards the end, it just kind of didn't really seem like they were that into each other anymore. And it just kind of seemed repetitive, a lot of what they did, and it wasn't really developing into much in my opinion. Spinner and Terry, I have a question mark next to them because they didn't end up happening, but I really would have loved Spinner and Terry to end up together. Like, I think they would have been really cute. I think they would have complimented each other well, but that just didn't end up happening because Paige had to come in and ruin it and be a bitch, essentially. Spinner and Paige. I do not like them in the first season. I think Paige is a bit too much, and Spinner just does not seem interested in her at all. It doesn't make for a good relationship for them. And Sean and Emma. They were the cutest little thing. I love them so much. I was so mad when they broke up. I think they really complement each other well. They really like... Emma's really like into the whole helping him study and get better grades thing and he's helping her have a little bit of fun once in a while and I think that they really complement each other well. So, yeah. Now we are at the end. So thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you enjoy this Degrassi series as much as I do. I get to rewatch Degrassi and I get to analyze the videos and maybe see some things that I didn't see at first but anyway thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video bye